The dialogue around artificial intelligence has been artificially polarized. On the one hand, some people think, oh, it's great that you're working in AI. We're going to be able to combine the power of IBM Watson and our genomics data and our wearables data, and we'll use that to manage our own health like the CEOs of our own healthcare. And on the other hand, some people say, oh, you must be building this, the Terminator. I'll invite you to the adult conversation. AI comes with trade-offs, like all exponential technologies. Yes, better, faster, cheaper problem solving, but also job disruption and human identity change, and some risk amplification and reduction. And we need to capture the benefits and proactively manage the risks. Artificial intelligence is going to have a lot of positive benefits in our lives. For example, in medicine, it's going to make medicine much more accurate in terms of diagnosis. It'll reduce prescription errors and medical errors. In developing countries, it's going to contribute to widespread literacy and an improvement in public health. And then in the area of transportation, we're going to see AI fuel a whole revolution in self-driving cars. Our brains haven't had an upgrade for over 50,000 years. And if your smartphone hadn't had an upgrade for five years, you'd be very concerned about that. The human brain has known limitations in speed, memory, bandwidth, and it has bugs in cognition. If you look at our current neocortex, it has a surface area about the size of a dinner napkin, and we'll be able to build artificial neocortex with the surface area of Manhattan, or New York, or the US, or the planet. So one can imagine building artificial neocortex that is vastly more powerful than the human brain, and we'll be able to partner with that machine intelligence in a way that allows us to open up new vistas in human problem solving and create a much higher quality of life for all the people on the planet.